Thank you for listening to the Tatnus Podcast on the Tatnus Co. Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. A Mercedes kind of sentiment, luxury, and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. See my sons out burst into yin and yang, right and left, me and. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the Tatnus Podcast. Man, you know, I've touched on this time and time again. I seem to always get these badass guests that are just so fucking, like, I mesh with them immediately. There's chemistry there. And this one is definitely no different. This here is someone I am proud to call my new friend. And I think everything about him is fucking awesome. Kenny Wilkerson. This man is a host at Florida Man Radio, 660 AM and 105.5 FM. He's a radio personality for Real Talk with G-Love, and he's a musician for Nova Rex, which is a dope band. And uh, this guy is just fucking amazing, dude. He has this awesome book out that... If you're a fan of Stone Sour like myself, you're going to dig this. And other bands, of course. Many other bands. He's got this cookbook out, and it's actually super dope because the proceeds go to charity for children with autism and I'll let him talk about the book I don't want to fucking you know kind of rehash it all Uh, I'll let him talk about that on the show like he does but um, he's got recipes from all these badass musicians for all different types of foods and if you're like me and you love food I mean how could you go wrong And the proceeds go to charity, which is not his charity. You know, it's just a cause he believes in. And I love that. You know, you all know my story with my child. I've got, you know, I've got kids, but my my youngest boy who passed, you know, you know the story. Um, So anytime somebody does something that is for a children's charity, it it just fucking hits my heart, you know, right where I live. And... um, you know, we just hit it off immediately. It's one of those great chemistry shows that, uh, you know, I'm proud to call him my new friend, man. And uh, anytime he needs anything, I think it's pretty much understood. As badass as he is, he'll never ask. But if he ever needs anything, I think it's pretty much understood. It's as good as done. Um, so this dude, I think you're going to really enjoy. We talk about a lot of stuff that... I think you're going to dig. This is a cool show. It was a blast to do. And I guarantee you it would have run longer if he didn't have his own show to do. So um, it's just one of those conversations that just kind of takes off. So check it out and show this cat some love. He's got so much going on. And uh, he deserves all the support in the world, man. He's a great guy. Check him out. How's it going, brother? Hey, what's happening, man? Thanks for having me on the program. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. It's awesome. Um, I was listening to your show just before doing this. And, oh, yeah. Uh, you I'm know. sorry. No, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I usually do the same thing when somebody's like, oh, I was just listening to your show. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe it's the Canadian in me. I feel the need to apologize. I was going to ask you if you were Canadian because I heard A already. So I was like, where, <laughs> now, where, are, you at Can- where are you at from Canada? I, do- at? I was born and raised in the Toronto area. Right. But about three years ago, I moved out here to Nova Scotia. Wow. So, yeah, it's so much more like just slowed down and calm, and you know, it's really nice, man. I, I dig it. Right. So, right. Um, no, Canada's, Canada's cool. Listen, my the band, you know, No Brex that I've been in, uh, it kind of originally got its base in Toronto. Uh, oh. The band was put, the band was put together in Toronto uh with all canadians except for me i was the only american <laughs> they picked me up and we came down and did um daytona bike week back in 1985 wow and uh n- nobody ever went home i mean you know it basically happened i mean got i switched guys out you know over the 35 years but uh yeah man they're all still in the states every one of them that's awesome yeah it's uh it's nice man Toronto's good for that i find um well, especially back then, you know what I mean? We're talking yeah. 100 million years ago. But, you know, the thing that I like about Canada, my favorite, is people are super nice, and they are. Uh, coffee's too expensive because you got to pay by the cup. Down here, you just pay two bucks and you drink as much as you want. But you guys have the very best strip clubs in all of the world. That's all I'm saying. 
<laughs> Canadian chicks, men are hot. That's all I'm saying. Right. We do, we do all right. Yeah. And we used to play like they'd have us in the basement and the girls up top. You know, like it used to be kind of a combo. A lot of places back in the day, you play yeah. downstairs or upstairs, and you know. And we had the same hours, so it was pretty good. Plus, look at girls like Pamela Anderson and whatever. I mean, I can list off a billion Canadian chicks that are hot. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we got go lucky. Canada. <laughs> we got lucky. We do that hot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and our beer is stronger too. So your beer is good. Yeah, your beer is good. Yeah. Funny money, but your beer is good. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know the only thing that flipped me out about Canada the most too is great rock clubs. What's left of them? But damn, you're liable to drive to to you know a hundred miles in between exits. I mean, it is spread <laughs> out up there, bro. It really is, man. I need gas. Wait a minute. We've got 180 more miles to the next exit. Right. So you know, God forbid you ever got to take a leak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's all. I love Canada, though, man. Second, I, I have to say that's my second favorite place. So yeah, you know what's really cool is I actually live in the the city that Trailer Park Boys was filmed in. Right. So that's pretty that's funny. Cool. Um, well, you know the show that I've been digging on on Hulu is um, something Kenny. Letter Kenny, yeah. Oh, I love it, dude. I, I just Letter talked Kenny. to a guy on another show um, the other day about that. <clears throat> he loves it, and uh, he's out in the U.S. as well. And he's like, dude, you guys got some good drugs out there because that show, I've seen it, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny, man. It's, there's some funny people up there for sure. So, well, yeah. good, man. I'm glad that we're, yeah, we're talking. So I'm glad to meet you. And, and uh, listen, how'd you get the name? Tat was it Tatness? Yeah, uh, I was a tattoo artist back in the day, um, and a client couldn't remember my name to save their life, and they just hit me with that shit, and then it stuck with everybody. Okay, uh, I like it. And then I just branded it. You know, I was like, "Fuck it," you know, like I'll just yep. brand. You know, I think these days you got to brand yourself, and um, you know, it became my clothing line, uh, and then just everything else I do, it like snowballed. Uh, no, wait, wait a minute. Clothing line. So is that shirt you're wearing your clothing line or no? No, no, no. Oh, no. I called you out. I'm sorry, bro. No, every once in a while I wear my own shit and I feel like an asshole. But right. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like when yeah, a band wears a, their own band t-shirt on stage. Right. It's, it's, a, little, it's like, a little weak, yeah. <laughs> now, are you, sleep, are you completely sleeved up? I'm getting there. Like, this yeah. arm, I've got a little bit more to go, but, uh, you know, it's been a couple grand later. Actually, uh, my forearm, I got a hell of a deal. 200, okay. two, 250 bucks for it was seven and a half hours straight. Oh, that's a great deal. Well, especially if it's good work. Yeah. Too, right? so. And the guy doing it was like, you know, about 40 plus years in the game. So he knew his stuff, man. So, right, right. Uh, you know, the thing about me, I, I've got a few tats, but the, the, uh, if I worked at a tattoo place, man, it, I would have been completely all the way to the neck by now. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's definitely addictive, right? Yeah, I, I usually struggle to pull the reins back a little bit and be like, okay, you know, calm down. Especially when you do tats yourself. You, right. try, you try to find areas where you could reach and do it yourself. And it's like, man, this is not going to end well because I'm going to be covered. Well, yeah, you got to pace yourself for sure. I figured you guys would be tattooing on each other and stuff. Right. right. You know, it, it's insane. Uh, well, listen, if I, ever, if I ever get your way, man, I need another tattoo. So we'll hell yeah, that. man. Um, Aronoff actually wants one, too. He said that... Uh, Kenny Aronoff's. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's cool. Yeah, he he's awesome, man. Uh, he I texted him the other day, uh, or probably a, call, a week or so back now. Jesus, time right. was. Um, but yeah, he was like, yeah, you know, because I'm supposed to be hanging with all of them in Montreal. Uh, you what, know, what what gig? What gig they got coming up? It's Montreal. a Burning Man festival. It's like a a virtual thing. Um, oh, okay. So Kenny Olson, buddy of mine, is going to be there from Twisted Brown Trucker. I know uh, all those guys, yeah. Oh, he's amazing, man. And uh, yep. uh, yeah, him and Sherry Nelson from Maxim Magazine. Yeah, yeah. I know other her too. She's another Canadian, yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. Um, I actually got uh, apparently an interview coming up for a magazine she's doing with me, which I thought was so cool. She hit me up last night. And oh, that's totally awesome. And she's like, yeah, I was, uh, I, you know, given an opportunity to interview whoever I want, and I, I picked you if, if that's okay with you. I'm like, honor dude yeah. like why well, she she she's good about taking care of the circle of people you yeah know what i mean so she's awesome. been she's been good to me she but she's bought half a dozen cookbooks and uh but back to kenny arnoff you know what was so i actually interviewed him too and for me it was a big deal because i'm from indiana man that's where i'm originally right. born well john mellencamp i mean it's a wall up there that you have to play a mellencamp song every 60 minutes <laughs> you think i'm kidding it's the truth every station up there plays a mellencamp song he's like they're He's like their um, 
Oh, who's that guy everybody likes? Uh, the boss, Bruce Springsteen for New Jersey. You know what I mean? He's the, he's the guy from Indiana. And then when I signed to Kenny, who still looks great for his age, by the way. Yeah, dude. Right? I, I don't think I'll live that long. But he, uh, he went to Bloomington, Indianapolis, you know, Bloomington uh, College and all that down there in Indiana. So we had, we had a lot in common that way. Yeah. He, he, came, he, he came from that scene. He's awesome. Um, and, yeah, I mean, there's uh, – it goes for Canada, too. Um, yeah. Where like the the bylaws um, are like you have to play a certain amount of Canadian content on your radio. I know. Stations. I uh, think it's fifty fifty though, isn't it? Is it fifty fifty? Something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's brutal because, man, I was just on this show the other day, and I apologize on behalf of Canada for Nickelback. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, see, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't hate them. I don't. It's the ego uh, I don't like. Well, they're not. Okay, so I'm from the 80s metal thing. So they have that vibe. I mean, let's, what's that song? Drop your thing, to your, your dress to your knees and all that. Oh, slime. But anyways, they have one good rock song that they repeat over and over. And they have one good ballad that they repeat over and over. And that's pretty much it. But they're both pretty good. I'm not a super hater. It's just they get ragged on just because they're a little kind of pg for rock and roll you know what i mean yeah my only They're not guns and roses let's put it that way yeah my only issue really is like chad's ego uh right. so we spent a good t like uh two hours and 16 minutes constantly ragging on this dude um right. i'm sorry but when you put yourself in the conversation with Corey taylor and tell yourself that you're better than him you've lost no, all credibility you. with me <laughs> you know what i mean no, i feel you man that's that's a good interview we need to get man that you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah, he's got that. New, doesn't he have a new solo album out or something? He's got some. He's working hard. I know that. Always, like that dude doesn't rest. You know. Yeah, no. I, I, I appreciate the guys that are still out there trying to make stuff happen. I mean, this this pandemic's been the weirdest thing that I've ever seen, and I think, unfortunately, minus just the money that everybody's losing in all the countries, right. just a lot of these bars are going to close down forever. They're just not going to open back up. Right, and it's been happening. Yeah. It's sad, man. Um, you know, I own my own business, but it's all like on the internet. I don't yeah. have that overhead, really. You right. know, I, I pay for a website. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, well, you know, what, what I thought about it was because, you know, Radio Airplay, minus Canadian or in the States, it's all corrupt and BS anyways, right? Right. Uh, you know, I always talk about United States. You know, they 80% of all the radio stations are owned by one conglomerate. And if you ain't in that click and paying that money to buy commercials and being their band with iHeart and all this kind of stuff, then you're, you're out of that loop. So what's, what's left out there for you? You know, somebody told me the other day, like even on Spotify, you have to sell almost a million copies just to make five grand. Right. So that's right. ridiculous. So only thing left was touring and it was actually getting a little bit better. These festivals, I liked it that like with Def Leppard and crew and those guys are trying to do these kind of mega rock shows where they're stacking bands not just a headliner with a wussy opener i mean it was trying to and i thought that was a good idea i was excited about that and, and then uh damn they took that away wow. you know wow. so what do, you, what do you do now right yeah. try to sell yeah. try to sell what cds you know it's funny so i have my own little radio show right six months into it and i do independent artists on wednesdays and i had a guy i met the other day it was a little free piece kind of like a stray cats thing it was kind of cool you know the guy had the elvis sideburns i thought well i'll put him on a wednesday so he says to me, hey, man, go to my car. I've got like four or five CDs to give you. And I'm like, dude, I don't have a CD player on my computer. There's no, there's no CD player even in my car. You, you know what I mean? They're, they're done. It's all just one song, one song, and that's it. It's all downloads now is what I was getting to. So the, even, even selling CDs, I mean, we sell them at shows now, but they're basically coasters. I mean, we'll sell them, autograph them, and then they'll still download the song, the song they like, you know, so. Yeah, I'm yeah. Old old. Um, yeah, I prefer to have the cover art and things well, of that yeah. nature and, and support the person putting in the work. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. me is how it should be. And I was talking to somebody about that. I think it was um, shit. I get so many people in a week. It's unreal that I don't even remember half the time who I had the conversation with. Right. Uh, I think it was uh, Aaron off actually. Right, and I said, man, I, I still support the uh, the artist, man. I, I still would rather buy, um, you know, I'll download something if it's for my gym playlist, you know. Right, but, right. But, but right. I'll, you know, because it's 
easy. Yeah. Uh, you can't get it off a CD onto your fucking phone, <laughs> you know. Right, right. But right. I still pay for the content because I believe in it. And well, so that well, guys like you is what keeping the business together. What what's left of it? It's the biggest craziest time. I have a son who's nineteen, and all he does is YouTube. That's it. He he doesn't watch TV, doesn't watch movies. Everything's YouTube. So I'll tell him something. I'm like, hey man, what's your favorite band? And he told me about a month ago. He said my favorite band is Queen. And I thought. Okay, I'll take that. Now, he obviously heard it on a game or something. Let's be real, right? So I'm like, man, so you ever seen a concert? I mean, you ready to go to a concert? And he said, well, I've seen concerts, Dad. And I'm like, what do you mean? I watch them on YouTube. And I'm like, dude, those are not – that doesn't count. No. You know, no. That virtual stuff, it doesn't really count. You have to be there and experience it and be around people uh, that all think alike, you know, on that level. It's just weird is what I'm saying. I can't – you know, everything's going to this digital age, and it's – it's bizarre. cool and sad. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, I feel it, it's really um, it, it's a weird direction. Uh, yeah, you know, and I think it has its benefit. You know, like you're saying, for yep. younger kids to kind of dig some of the older stuff, and um, you know, none of this auto tune bullshit. Right. You know, I dig that. Um, but it does kind of have that it's a double edged sword, right? It has mm. that negative um aspect to it, which uh you know, it, it's like people don't get um I was talking to Rocky Kramer about that. And I right. said people don't get that you, you know, just because you love what you do for a living doesn't mean it's not a a job. Oh, it's a full-time job. Right. I, I, I'm a full-time musician. I, I, get up at, I still get up at 7.30 every morning, no matter what time I go to bed, and I work all day. And then I talk to guys like yourself. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm, and then I, I got to go from here to something else, right? So I'm like always trying to get it going. But, uh, yeah, it's tough. And, and then, you know, the other thing that was killed, too, about the concerts, because I'm back on that one, is this that, you know, you'll go to a show, and, and, you know, and you might be playing in front of however many thousand people, and the person's like this the whole time. Record, you know, it's like, dude, put down the phone and enjoy the moment. It's supposed to be about the moment, you know. I mean, I don't mind if you want to tape part of one song because it's your favorite song. But it's like, God, leave something, you know, leave something to the experience. Yeah. And I mean, you know, that, that's what I'm getting at is like the fact that people don't feel that because you enjoy what you do, that you suddenly do not need to be compensated financially for it is just absurd to me. Yeah. You know? It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work and a lot of money and a lot of uh, that's like again back to the pandemic i mean i'm i'm worried about a lot of bands that's going to break up i'm, lot, I'm worried about a lot of bars that won't recover uh, the waitresses the production people the sound guys you guys are all out of work man yeah and we're, we're the first to get hit and the last that'll get recovered you know yeah it's crazy um yeah I love cooking, man, and you got this cookbook here that I think yes. is super cool. I'm very excited about it, man, right here. Rockin' Recipes for Autism. That's good. Um, what, it, what it is is I have a son. I just have the one boy, and he's got Asperger's, you know, high-functioning autism. So I always say I have the American Idol backstory. You know what I mean? Like I, I – my kid's got autism. I mean, he's been in autism school. We homeschooled him for a while, put him in an autistic school as well. But what happened was I just I actually had a radio program a few years ago and um, I just came back from New Orleans and I like the food in New Orleans. So it's just like you eat there. There's no other place like it. So then when I came back to Florida, I was like, you know, it took me a week to recover. And this guy's like, hey, bro, I'm 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 from New Orleans. Uh, my, you know, my mom's been there, you know, my family 200 years, blah, blah, blah. Let me give you this jambalaya recipe. So I said, cool, took it, of course. Right. Some musician. And then it kind of became a thing. And then so after I had, you know, I don't know, maybe like 30, 40 recipes that, that were just given to me, I um, found this organization called We Rock for Autism. It's a 501C out of South Florida that does uh, raises for awareness and music therapy for kids on the spectrum, which, again, you know, these kids are all different. They're all like snowflakes. Each Asperger or autism kid has a little different issues. Some have, you know, OCD with it, this and that and whatever. Uh, you know, my son was going to school where there's kids that were just nonverbal, which it didn't work out for him. You know, people don't know how to handle these kids. 
Um, but the music thing, they, they sort of think out of their one side of their brain. They think different than a lot of people, just a perspective on it. So music does help a lot. And as you know, a lot of music's cut out of schools. Music always gets the bad end of the deal. But then after I got the charity, I just started reaching out to the rock and roll community. A lot of guys I've been on tour with and guys that I've met. And uh, so what it is, it's called Rock and Recipes for Autism. It's almost a two pound book. It's hardback. It's uh, full glossy. I have members just on the cover alone. I have members from Ozzy, White Snake, Quiet Riot, Stone Sour, uh, Warrant, uh, Poison, Evanescence, Great White, on and on and on. Uh, but there's 57 rockers total in the book. I have, I do have probably 10 Canadians, by the way, in the book as well. <laughs> um, I know uh, Mitch Moyd's in it, who's in Great White now, right? Uh, I got the band Helix in it. They're friends. I got the band uh, Killer Dwarfs, who are friends of mine as well. Um, they're in it. So, uh, but it just has a lot of different things, and it's it's never been done before. It's 127 pages. So I'm going to pull a page up for you. Like here, the late Frankie Benelli, right from Quiet Riot, God bless him. He uh, does uh, pumpkin ravioli, and then he'll give just like a little fun bio on him. And then these are recipes that were sent from them. I've just copied it. So, and then they all have their own little picture. But they'll have stuff like there's Ricky Rocket, Be Poison Band, and then um. Here's Roy from Stone Sour, but it'll say something along the lines like when Roy was a kid, he was playing on pots and pans and now he cooks for his family, blah, blah, blah. So it's really cute. Uh, Steve Lukather, uh, Don Dawkins was the last kid I got in here or last kid, last guy I got in the book. I was doing a show last year in Montana, opening up for Don and we're eating in the tent. And he's like, man, I cook. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Make phone call. Hold the press. So Don Dawkins in it. Uh, like I said, Steve Lukather's in it. He has a kid with autism. Um, so it's just, um, here's Joey Allen from Warren, for instance. So there's a lot of great guys in here. And uh, like I said, the proceeds go to We Rock for Autism. Never been done before. And uh, now I'm a author of a book. I love it, dude. Um, honestly, because I'm a huge like cooking fan. To me, it's an art right. form and I love art. I do art of all sorts, like drawing, tattooing, uh, you know, right. cooking to me is an art form in itself. And well, I love that. And I think that's super cool. And I mean, everybody knows now I've, you know, I had a child who was born with a terminal condition called I'm sorry. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, so he passed uh, two years at, later. They gave him two weeks to live. Nine days after he turned two, he decided his fight was over. But wow. it created special needs as well, because even if he lived to be 20, he would never walk or talk. Or Right. There's a condition called NKH, where basically it's a gene mutation. Both parents have to have that specific mutation, and it's so rare. Um, the, the rarity of it is just absurd that those two people will find each other, have the same yeah. pain, and, uh, and even then, there's a 75% chance he wouldn't have it, but he did. Uh, right. so it's, uh, basically what it is, is there's, um, a gene that just doesn't function. So what it does is like, it just doesn't, there's an amino acid that goes to the brain that this gene has to like break it down. Um, right. so it doesn't go in toxic levels, but that gene does not function. So therefore, um, there's, uh, a, an amino acid called glycine that goes to the brain in toxic levels because it's not being broken down and right. the medication only slows the process. It doesn't. Uh, so this causes seizures like on the regular. Yeah, um, I understand. And, um, you know, basically it, it's just like, they can't find uh, a medication that can permeate the uh, blood brain barrier. So there's no cure. Um, oh, God bless you, man. How long ago did this, how long ago was this for you? He was born in 2016 and they told us he had two weeks to live. And, oh, wow. Two years, 2018. Yeah, 2018. Um, oh, God bless you, man. That's rough, dude. I, I can't even imagine it. You know, it's funny. Now, my kid's a, a teenager now, but when I, I remember after having my son, hell, I couldn't even watch those shows. You know, you see these shows where kids are getting kidnapped or whatever the Bet, I, or, or even like the kids that have cancer and they're raising money on TV. I'd have to turn it, man. I'd be like, I'd have a tear running down my face. It's amazing I used how to, emotional you get after. And I always said that it was a gift because it, it, it's the first time in my life that something is more important than, than me. Right. Do you know what right. I mean? 
I mean, I love my family, my mom, dad, and all this stuff, right? Girl, whatever. But, but your kid, man, you, you take a bullet for your kid, right? So Exactly. And um, so, like, stuff like this that goes for, like, children's charities and stuff really always hit right. me right in the heart, man. I, I always appreciate that so much. Um, right. I always, you know, think that that deserves a lot of endorsement. Uh, where do you buy the book? Because you know what, what I did with it. It's my first time with the book. Um, I, right now, you can still just go to the website, which is Rockin without a G, uh, Rockin Recipes for Autism dot com, and everything is really there. Um, the, there's a you know the press release, why I did it, when I did it, how I did it, where the money goes, all that stuff. Um, there's a few links. I, I I was lucky in April before the book actually came out when it was still in pre sale mode that uh, Rachel Ray featured it. So that was kind of cool. Uh, you know, how many yeah. rockers are in Rachel Ray? You know what I mean? So I was kind of into that. And then um, in July, there was a magazine called uh, Autistic Parenting Magazine, and they featured a Father's Day issue with me and my son. So that was cool. And then a few rock outlets, you know. Um, the, the problem that I had is this, I really, it's just was really bad timing. You know, in the middle of the pandemic, most of these companies, uh, even your Good Morning America, Today Show, Rolling Stone, Billboard, these kind of guys that I'm still trying to get, by the way. Um, most of them went to skeleton crews if they didn't close down. And all they want to talk about is politics, UFOs, race riots, gig cancellations. There's nothing really, you know, heartwarming on any of them. But I think, as you see, too, it slowly looks like it's coming out of there finally. This is the first time in over six months that there's a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, I know you guys in Canada have been doing really well, too. I heard something that you had one day where you didn't have any new cases or something. It was like you guys were at zero. Yeah, where I'm at right now, we've been in that situation. This province, Nova Scotia, has been in that situation right. for a long time because we were very like proactive about it. Whereas where I come from, new right. cases all the time, uh, in the 300 area, you know. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just confused on it. I mean, not just getting all bummed out on that whole pandemic thing, but it's, uh, it's obviously horrible. I understand that. Uh, I'm not really a conspiracy guy, but when you, I can give you like five, six different conspiracies, and they all seem to leap sort of halfway play into it now. You, you, maybe that wasn't, maybe it wasn't, but it's, it's in play. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Obviously, in the states, we got an election coming up. So, with that in mind, they're both those got both angles. They're both using it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And then we virus this. And I mean, I I predicted. Now that I could be an asshole, but I predicted that after the election, it'll probably be done with. I It'll either, I, you know what I mean, a cure. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, you know, all the numbers are wrong. See, in the states, when you tell somebody they even if they go in for a heart attack but end up having COVID, uh, the, the hospital still can put them down for COVID and they get 10 grand per Amen. person. So now, now, you're, now there's money involved too, see? So is that another conspiracy thing? I don't know. All I know, it's been hurting a lot of families. And I understand that people need to wash their damn hands, wear a mask when you go out. There's just basic stuff you do. But, uh, you know, Labor Day just happened here in the States. Now, I happen to be in Atlanta for that weekend, but the beaches were packed here. I mean, it was just, you know, college kids just jumping on top of each other. So I don't really know. I mean, I'll, I'll get back to you in, what, 50-some days, and we'll talk about it again, right, and <laughs> see if it's over. Right. I, I actually had this exact conversation with my producer. And I said, every time there's an election, whether it's your country or mine, doesn't matter. Yeah. It does. Um, there's always something yep. that happens that is a distraction. So exactly. while, while you're watching what this hand is doing, you're not seeing what this hand is doing. Exactly. And, um, you know, I, I, I feel like conspiracy theorist has become such a dirty word. Right. Because people lose sight of the fact that just because something is a conspiracy does not make it not fact. Right. Yeah. It, conspiracy actually the legitimate definition is just that it's a conspiracy that a bunch of people conspired together to create this thing that is you know it's happening it's real it just because now we've like kind of bastardized the word conspiracy doesn't mean you're crazy uh, right. 
you know, it's kind of like paranoia. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not going to get you. You know what I'm saying? Right. You right. Yeah, no, I got you. you. You know, you could be extremely paranoid about somebody stalking you, but they're stalking you. You have every reason to be paranoid, you right. know. Um, so conspiracies are legit. Not every one is. Right. Know, right. I mean, it's kind of over the age or over the over the edge. But the thing about um, all the stuff that we're talking about is that a lot they just the guys in power that have the money, they do not let a disaster go to waste. Right. So they're, they're going to spin it however it will benefit them. And just like we did here in the States, and I don't know, you know, they basically, they, they let the government, they let, they let the governors of the states, just like you are saying, you're, like, for instance, you can't control South Dakota, which is kind of out there by itself, not that many people. You can't, con you can't control them the same way you control New York City. Do you know what I mean? You have to let everybody kind of do their thing. And, and some have done well and some have done horrible. Um, so I don't know. Now, did, with 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 Canada, did you guys have like a national thing? I mean, was it it went from Providence, right? They, it was the whole country got the same thing. Did they not like the same kind of lockdown? Um, not so much. I mean, okay. in some respects, yes. But right. where I'm at, I think they were a little more strict. Okay. Uh, but within reason. And people respected right, right. it out here. People out here understood it for the most part. You're going to have those exceptions, of course, right? Where oh, yeah. Everybody's going to whine, yeah. Right. But for the most part, people understood it. They respected it. And they abide by it. And that's why we had nothing going on to report, you know, in terms of new cases. Right. Um, and, like, my producer is a healthcare worker. That. Right works in like um you know permanent care homes and like uh, you know so she's seen time and time again that these places will claim that there's all these cases in there you know because they're gonna because the, out yeah. here in this province the um the healthcare system is just in shambles because there's not enough workers it's right. kind of understaffed everywhere uh, where I come from, the Toronto area, in, in that province in Ontario, like, they're, they have the pick of the litter for jobs. Right, right. But for some reason, even though it's way more expensive out there to live, they don't pay as much, typically, as they do out here. So it just, it's weird. It's, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, like Florida, you know, Florida doesn't pay as much as, as the rest of the country because you're, they're kind of getting you for being here. You know, I always say I live where people vacation. Right. right. I mean, so, um, but uh, my, my fiance, w w which I've been with her for six years almost, she's a, she's a nurse. She's at work now as a nurse. So I, I've seen it all. You know what I mean? The problem that they had is they didn't have the materials that they needed. They were short on the whole mask gloves and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? To begin with. But, uh, you know, I haven't seen, I mean, like I said, a lot of these, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get all bummed out on that. Now, when's the last time you've been to a, a, a seen a live performance? I mean, it's been six months. <laughs> it's been a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I miss. I mean, I'm just worried about jobs and stuff as far as that goes. Right. It's been a minute, then. Uh, I mean, shout out to all the nurses too. That, Yo, oh yeah, yeah love that, the nurses, man. I mean, Underrated. Absolutely, man. They they're they, like they're like school teachers. Right. Same oh, thing. Look. Underrated. Yeah, yeah, overlooked and, and overworked. Um, underpaid. Underpaid, underappreciated yeah. until you do. Yeah, they are. You know? um, so shout out to them, man, for, you know, doing what they do because I couldn't do it. There's no way. Um, no, I, I'm not into it. She, she loves it. She'll say something like, I, I've had her before, and she's like, somebody came in and had to get a toe cut off, right? Some old person that had diabetes, and they cut a toe, and she's actually taking a picture of it and, and, and messaging me the toe. I'm like, that's gross. I can't watch that. I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, oh. I, I don't really like horror movies that are too gory because it just grosses me out. Um, oh, she loves horror flicks, too. You know, the other thing about me is, like, I'll watch those shows where they'll say, hey, if you think you have a headache, it might be because – and I'm like, now I've got the disease. I'm that guy. I'm a little, I'm a little whatever you call that, stay hypochondriac. Off, stay off of WebMD. <laughs> I, oh, I hate it, man. I can't watch it. I can't watch Dr. Oz, nothing. I'm out. I'm out. I don't want to hear anything. La 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 la. <laughs> all, all, all glittering rainbows. Right. I, I don't. Uh, 
I don't get into that either because it, it's always doom and gloom, man. I hate it, man. Doom and, and we've got enough of that in the world as is, right? Yeah. You know, um, that's what I always say. Like, you know, I don't get too deep. Like, I talk about the pandemic when people want to because it affects us all. In you know, we'll talk about how it affects us all. But right. I don't get into, like, you know, facts like I'm CNN or some shit because I don't know. No, well, I'm not. I mean, plus, the, I mean, I, again, they, those facts change daily. Right. I don't know. I mean, not even, I mean, sometimes hourly, you know what I mean? So wear a mask, don't wear a mask, do this six foot apart. Now you can take it off. No, it wasn't. We got a thing. I mean, it's like, I don't even know. All I want to do is go play a gig. <laughs> Which, actually, the last gig we did, now, we, we play a lot of bike events, right? I play a lot of Harley dealerships and bike stuff, like surges and things like that. That's awesome. Which I didn't, I didn't go this year, by the way, because it was just too crazy, and it's like 60 hours round trip for me to get there. I wasn't going to chance it. Um, but uh, the last gig we officially played was the last day of Bike Week in Daytona, which is always a good gig, Bike, or bike Week. Uh, then they pulled the plug on everybody. And our next gig is the 17th in Daytona for Biketoberfest. So it's going to be a, a damn near seven months since we've played. And like everybody else, we're just like, you know, trying to keep busy. My guys all live in Tampa. I'm in Orlando. So we're about two new hours apart, you know, but we've been sending songs back and forth. What kills me is uh, it's like everybody's going to release an album come January. I swear to God, it's going to be the biggest influx of new music ever because these guys are they're not doing anything. So they're all just writing songs they're on the road, performing, supporting albums. So I'm waiting to see how many albums come out in uh, in January. Right. There's going to be probably like three records in the in the, uh, sh you know, on the shelf waiting to come out in, in well, the barrel, you know. <laughs> Well, what's going to happen is they're going to have they're going to have ten records that'll get airplay, and they'll have three thousand of them that, you, that you'll just never you know you'll have to track down yourself. You know what I mean? But everybody's right now, which I'm excited about that. Um, again, you know, I, I did report that I think they said it was over eighty percent of all musicians, and that's starting from the top down. Is uh, they they're they they're week to week on paychecks, man. You know, there's never really that kind of serious flow. I mean, maybe unless you're, you know, the Rolling Stones and stuff where you got a, a cushion. Right. But typically all the, all the guys I grew up with and, and the guys around, they're all just paycheck to paycheck, man. And the money was getting really good, too, at the first of the year. Clubs, like I said, more festivals, more events. And now uh, that's going to be another issue. Because you know, the clubs are crying. I mean, I'll tell you, even the gig that I just officially got the word for yesterday – I don't even know the time slot yet, but they, they, uh, they already beat me up over money, you know, cause we can only do 50% crowd or 75% if there's food or, you know, <laughs> yeah. So how do you, you know, how do you, ex I feel for them, you know? And then, like, like I said, down here, um, now Monday, this last couple of days ago, they opened up bars to 50% capacity. Uh, but prior to that, they were absolutely closed unless you had food. Right. You know, so it's, it's been really tough, man. That's all I can say. So hopefully, you know, but you can't see these rockers right now, but you can see where they cook. Damn. And you know what I like about the book too, bro, is it's a three-parter for me. Obviously, the main thing is the support of um, autism, right? Um, uh, they say one in 54 uh, people uh, in the world have some form of autism. So it's really up there. Uh, it's not like one and, you know, I mean, it's a lot. And then the other thing is if you happen to like, say, what Ricky Rocket from Poison Cooks, then you buy the book. I mean, he's got a great recipe, what he wants. And then um, if you just happen to like it, like yourself, you said you like to cook, you know, my girl uh, comes from a restaurant background. Her parents owned a, uh, a diner growing up and she still has the, the Martha Stewart books and, you know, the Rachel Ray books. And, and, and the thing about a book well, at least in my brain, is it doesn't expire. That's right. You know, you, know, you cut a single today. The, the, I mean, you're lucky if you can get three, four months out of it. And they were like, where's, where's your new song at? You know, they just don't have a longevity like that. But with a book, even though I'm kind of screwed at this point with everything that's happening media-wise, it's, it's new until I say it's not. You know what I mean? And then um, it's volume one. Um, I actually had more recipes than I needed. Um, I thought the book was going to be like one recipe per page, not two pages per recipe. 
So I've already got a start on a second one. And then obviously these, some of these new guys from the radio show that I've met, um, I can get those guys too. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm excited. I just have to get through the first one first. So. I have a feeling that um, this interview I have for this magazine, they're going to, because I was asked for a picture. Right. I, every summer I make, I have this weird routine. I talked to Sherry about this, Sherry Nelson. Okay. Um, it's probably weird to people. It started like 2015 or something um, where I would just drink a bunch of booze in the summer and make homemade barbecue sauce while listening to Rick James. Oh, good stuff. Okay. <laughs> That's, yeah. And it, involved, by the way, right? For, of course. And right for it became a thing that I do every summer. It's like, right. I have to do it because I love cooking. I love barbecue with charcoal, especially. Yeah, um, barbecue's good. Yeah, man, I'm a charcoal guy. Um, you know, and uh, so I make like this jalapeno honey barbecue sauce that it seems every person I give a jar to is like, dude, within the week it was gone. Right. <laughs> One guy even said he used it as a base for uh, barbecue pizza. And right, right. So I mean, he loved it. And I was like, that's interesting. That's different. I got a few types I make, but people love the jalapeno honey um, for chicken and pork, like ribs and uh, wings. Right. And, and um, so I feel like because I was asked for a picture of it, it's probably going to be mentioned. <laughs> oh, that's cool. No. So, so when are exactly are you going into business to sell your barbecue sauces? Right. That's kind of what she said is like, you know, this could be kind of a branch off and I'm like, man, there's, you know, that'd be dope, but there's so many rules and laws. I know it's all about the food, food yeah. right? you know, with safety and what have you, which is great. Uh, right. It's just tough to navigate, you know, those waters a little bit. Cause I don't know anything about all those like, you know, you'd have to have like a, a pro kitchen um, that can I feel you. investigate it every once in a while to make sure you're staying on top of like standards and what have you. And um, But I did want to do it for like a farmer's market. To That's what I was going to say. That was my first thing. I was like, man, you got to put a farmer's market and, and really test it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wanted to do that and put all the proceeds to NKH research. For there you go. You know what I mean? That was the goal. Uh, you know, so at some point, I feel like that has to happen. Right. But yeah, you know, I need that book myself. I'm going to find that myself because I love Oh, yeah. And I was, I was trying to think. I don't have a lot of barbecued ones in here. I know that Will Hunt did a smoked brisket. There's a couple of barbecue recipes in here. But uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll have to check it out, man, for sure. Yeah. I love the cause. I love, you know, I love supporting my friends. Um, I appreciate it, man. You know, and uh, I think it's just a worthy thing to have because I have my own things, but it's like I love just like art. I love other people's variations of things. And uh, how, how else do you discover you love something, food wise, even? Was someone else right. came up with this idea, and then right. you tried it, and you're like, oh, that's really good. And then eventually, you'll create your own, you know, version of it, right? Uh, so there's nothing wrong with having other people's input and recipes and things. That's great. Yeah. Well, I always just liked it. Like I said, it was just kind of a, after I got a few of the recipes and then I, I actually got a charity that I, cause I'm not the charity. Right. So I didn't want to deal with all that. But after I met these guys off and on and dealt with them and then, um, then it was just a go. It was a mission. It took me about two years. Uh, I, I really kind of, thought about it for a year, just throwing it around and collecting more recipes and getting it together. But the, the main thing is it's just, it was very expensive and I, I put my own money up on it. So that's what's insane. So, I mean, I believe in it enough to put my own money. Uh, I think we, we might've raised about 18% of it, you know, but it's hard to raise money on something that you don't have in your hand. Yeah. I mean, on a, th on, on, on a thought, you know what I mean? That yeah. Was really, yeah I love that. Um, yeah. I, I, I do because I feel like, um, like you said, it's not really something that's been done, um, mm -hmm. you know, which is super cool. And I feel like I've actually had so many pioneers on my show as a guest that I call my friends, which is super cool because you're doing something that hasn't actually been done really, you know, mm -hmm. 
Um, Ken Sagos from Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4, I did not know this until he told me. Yeah, tell me. Um, he was actually the first black character in a, in a global horror movie that survived. Right oh, through, wow. Right yeah. to the end. Um, so that was groundbreaking. That was actually a big deal. Um, and I never caught on to that. I never realized that that was actually a, st a statistic. Um, and I thought, wow, what an honor that must be. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I would have to think so. I mean, yeah, especially with, uh, you know, talking about that, especially with the, uh, the way everything is now with the whole race stuff. You know what I mean? It's really crazy out there. Right. But again, right. again, uh, what well, really comes down to cops, but I mean, they're not all bad cops. I mean, come on. And these guys are freaking out. Um, I support the police, but uh, that's another media thing that just spinning on each other. I I'll give you a, for instance. So what happened was about two, well, it'll be three weeks, three weeks today. I was in the North side of Atlanta, Georgia, right? Um, I was invited to come out and work a Harley Davidson deal. They had, uh, believe it or not, Monday, they had Friday night, they had DMC from Run DMC. Um, Saturday night was my buddies from Saving Able. <clears throat> they played. And then Sunday was a band from Georgia called Rehab. They had this bartender song everybody knows. So, um, so that was part of it. Plus, they also had bike shows and this and that and whatever. Now, over that three-day period, I think approximately, I'm just guessing, maybe 8,000 people showed up. And 60% of them were African-American black, right? I mean, 60% of them. And so I'm meeting a lot of people and we're all on the same page. It was amazing. It really opened my eyes that, that the, you know, my joke was, and I don't, it's just funny. I said, look, man, everybody, everybody loves watermelon. Everybody loves fried chicken. Right. Everybody wants to bang Halle Berry. <laughs> far off man you, you know what i mean so uh i always just make a joke i said if it ever breaks out into kind of race war which will never happen i said what i'm going to do is keep two t-shirts in my trunk one of willie nelson right for the rednecks and one of Tupac. so no matter no matter what shit's going down i was still on the shirt and i'll be good <laughs> i love it i, I you no, know, I, I think that's a, a bajillion percent correct that um you know, I, I cracked up large when um, Dave Chappelle talked about that. Right. And he has this way of bridging that race gap with humor that it's not yeah. offensive to anybody. And well, he can get away. He can, he can get away with about anything. He's Dave Chappelle. Right. You know? and, and for him to say, you know, as it turns out, apparently, me loving fried chicken is a genetic, you know, disposition. Right. Because I'm black. I thought it was just because it's fucking delicious. <laughs> it is because it's delicious. What are you talking about? Right. You know, but he's kind of commenting on the stereotype. That exactly. That's why I was making a joke about it. But like I said, everybody was totally cool. They were like, we were all on the same page. And plus, I will tell you this too. You know, um, the other thing about this particular Harley Davidson dealership is that they were all like minded. You know, you can't be a damn bomb on any level, white or black, and own a freaking Harley. Right. That's a high-end, expensive. It's like owning a boat. You know what I mean? You've got to have a good job. You've got to keep it up. And then we did this sound-off competition one day, which was mostly black. But, I mean, some of these bikes were hundred grand, man. You know, and, and they're showing up, pulling them up with these, uh, these big trucks and everything else. I mean, they ain't messing around. So, um, yeah, so you can't buy into it. Again, that's more of that conspiracy stuff. You know, I, like I said, I'm just, uh, unfortunately, we're stuck for about uh, seven more weeks or whatever it is with this crap here in the States and then hopefully free up. And if, if it doesn't, I'm coming to Canada. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm going to go play the rock pile or somewhere, right? Every American I talk to says the same thing. You know what's wrong with Canada? I don't fucking live there right now. <laughs> right. No, man, I'm ready, man. Like I already said, best strippers, good coffee. Uh, what, what else you need, man? Give me a rock club. I'm good. That's, and you guys are rock fans up there. You guys do play the rock. You like the rock, so. Uh, you know, that that's the trade-off is the coffee pricing for the, the uh, best. It the, is. You know. It, no, that's the first thing I freaked out when I got them. Like, here's two bucks, and they give me a coffee. Now, it's been years ago that it was two bucks. And then I'm like, can I have a refill? And they're like, yeah, two more bucks. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. 
I drink like six cups in the morning. I can't afford this. <laughs> just give me the pot. Here's a thinner. <laughs> yeah, man. Just give me the goodies, right? But uh, no, uh, Canada. And you guys, uh, uh, and everything's named after hockey players. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Um, yes. I think it's awesome, really. I mean, you guys just had the, didn't they just have the Stanley Cup or something? I mean, something like that just happened. Yeah, I mean, oh my God, it, it's so bizarre to try to follow anything at this point when there's no crowds. It's just, I don't know, it feels weird. Well, I, I can't watch basketball because it's all uh, Black Lives Matter, boom, 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 boom. On you. And, and the thing is, I get some of that, but I really just want to watch sports. Right. You know, I don't want to hear anybody's political views. And I sure in the hell don't care about any athlete's point of views. You know what I mean? I mean, that's just silly. Uh, especially coming from multi-millionaire guys, you know what I mean? That come on, man, come on. You know that had that whole thing with LeBron where he was going off. You know, and I'm like, did he even graduate high school? I don't <laughs> think he even graduated high school. And just because you can dunk a ball, who gives a shit? I feel the same thing about the Kardashians or who was that? Tommy Lee from Motley Crue was going off the other day, and I'm like, Tommy, didn't you write songs about heroin? Like, dude, chill out. Nobody really, really cares about your opinion. Yeah. It's mind-boggling, yeah. the egos that these guys get, that they think they even have a voice. Yeah. And, and let's not forget, musicians in general are just needy, weird people, and I have to be one. And then actors as well. But the thing is, those are the kids that you picked on in school. You know what I mean? It's like, what? And now you're going to give me your advice on anything? It's like, come on. <laughs> don't care, man. Totally don't care. Just rock and roll, man. You know, I mean, give me, you know, give me some chicks then up there naked dancing while you're playing, you know, Dr. Feel Good. That's all I care about, man. Right. And I feel like, you know, media is so divisive on purpose that uh, oh, 100%. we have to, it, like, it's like we're losing every outlet that does not have a political stance, um, whether it be sports or, you know, um, I mean, is, is there is there any outlets left that are not political on certain level that lean? I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm old enough, but, you know, not that I was really around for that, but like a Walter Cronkite. Those kind of guys used to come out and just read the news, right? Yep. But now every time you're watching the news, it's just like, I don't care if it's CSNBC or Fox or wherever you want to go. It's like watching TMZ. Yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no difference. And then they all will have an opinion. And I'm like, I don't care about the opinion. Just tell me what happened. You know, there was a fire. This happened, whatever. You know, give me the stats. Give me the real. And that's why you, you can't find that. And that's probably why these kids these days are all on just their phones. They're looking for somebody to give you that perspective. And, and, and they'll group together. You know what I mean? They, they find one outlet that they seem common with. But, I mean, everybody seems to forget about the whole – Damn thing with the Pentagon releasing UFO tapes. I'm like, hey, they threw UFOs in the middle of this damn thing. That's hilarious. How, how long uh, is it before the Loch Ness Monster makes an appearance in the media? <laughs> it, it, as long as they can spin it, yeah. You know what I mean? It's all, it's all crazy, dude. But uh, discovered you know, the Loch Ness Monster is legitimate and happens to be a Republican. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, bullshit. it's all bullshit, dude. You know. But uh, like I said, hopefully soon and we can all get back out there and rock and hopefully these bands will stay together and, uh, you know, we're losing a lot of the classic rock guys, you know what I mean? They're starting to fade off. You know, I, I just seen a report the other day where Quiet Riot was going to keep going and I'm like, there's nobody even original in the band. I don't understand it. Yeah, it's weird. Um, that, that's becoming commonplace, I think. Um, for that generation of bands, for sure. Yeah. Where it's like there's nobody familiar left. The name there's nobody in the band. It's like a, it's like a tribute band to themselves. <laughs> right. The name is the same. But I mean, God bless them, right? But I mean, I just don't get it. I I, I seen another one like that too. Uh, Starship. You know, remember it used to be Jefferson Starship. There's not an original person even in that band. <laughs> it's like that's not you know. At least give me the damn keyboard player or something. Okay. <laughs> they but anyway. They might have the same lawyer. Uh, you yeah, know. well, <laughs> that's about um, maybe. Well, that's like it's like watching Sha Na Na. Holy fuck! Right, that's I know that was dating myself. Oh my god! I mean, they did play Woodstock, by the way. They did, and Sha, yeah, Sha Na Na. Hey. But uh, listen, man, I, I appreciate meeting you. Um, it's all good. Uh, I'll have to come up there and try your barbecue out for sure. Hell yeah! And before I forget. Thank, yeah. You know, I, I got to say, like, fucking congrats on the uh, 
the publication with the um, your show spot. You actually beat me by two places. You're number eight. Oh, is that, I think I seen your comment, by the way. Uh, no, yeah. that that was uh, totally unexpected and totally awesome, and, and it, it made uh, the people at my radio station head spin. So that was good. Uh, but uh, no, we just I just try to stay in my lane, bro. You know what I mean? I thought that was cool. Um, uh, I, I really, I really appreciate that, and, and I appreciate the guys over there. Obviously, at World, World Star PR, yeah. Jimmy and Eileen are great. And uh, but yeah, you know, and I'll tell you for what it's worth, I did get a couple of uh, more sponsors last week or, in the, or this week, so at least potential and somebody coming in and whatever. And I was like, cool, because uh, you, you know, uh, radio is not free either, man. You you have to pay a lot of bills, so. And for me, I just did it because I can, you know, I enjoy it enough. I, I, I love talking to people. Um, my thing was I, I got to interview Rudy Sarzo uh, two weeks ago, right? Not having to be a bass player. So Rudy was the guy that in 1982, and I'm like maybe 15, 16 years old, I owned a bass. I wasn't really a bass player, but I owned one, right? And I, me and my little band, we went and, and found some stoner dude that had into, had a, a satellite dish in his basement it was weird let's just put it that way but i remember watching that concert of ozzy right after randy died with brad gillis and everything and it like changed my life dude it really did it was that was the moment that changed my life i mean and rudy happened to be the biggest part of it so i, I reached out to rudy on social media and i just was hey rudy i got this radio gig you know so many thousand people blah 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 i'm interviewed but anyways i was like i just want you to know that i play bass still to this day and it's your fucking fault that's all i wrote him and then he wrote me back he said i'm in i'm like cool so i geeked out a little bit you know what i mean and and you know damn rudy's like 60 69 now or something you know what i mean and i'm i'm like man i got i got to, to do that if i don't do another thing with the radio i got to do that you know what i mean so it, it's it's been fun that way and then meeting people like yourself too you know what i mean I, I interview we do um again we do um national bands on mondays on wednesdays we do independent artists i, I interviewed a band two months ago called crown lands uh up in your area and those guys just got a big universal deal which i thought was nice and then um on wednesdays we just miscellaneous authors nascar drivers wwe wrestlers whatever you want, whatever we want to do so it's been it's been uh, enjoyable that way matter of fact i'm getting ready to go to my radio show here in a little bit so <laughs> keep it moving right uh hey man is there anything you want to uh kind of put out there for people well uh, you know, as far as the band goes, like I said, Novarex, uh, this is our 35th anniversary. You guys can check out a lot of stuff. If you just Google the band at this point, uh, there's dozens of pages of stuff. Um, obviously, Facebook, I stay on, on, on top of because I'm old school. Um, but we're on all the social media. Uh, as far as the radio gig, if you guys ever want to check it out, it's called um, Real Talk with G-Love and Kenny the Rocker. That'd be me. And uh, we're on at 7 p.m. Monday through Friday uh, on Florida Man Radio, which is part of JBC Broadcasting, which is a big, big deal. And we got that. You can download the apps. You can say, Alexa, play Florida Man Radio. You can go to the website. It's all there. You know, obviously in Orlando, it's on 105.5. And but the main thing, the cookbook. Please check out the cookbook. It's uh, uh, an effort of love. Again, the hardest thing I've ever done, the most expensive thing I've ever done, but the most rewarding thing I've ever done. I would sure like to do another one as well. Um, all the proceeds uh, go to We Rock for Autism, 501C out of South Florida. You can go to Rockin', without a G, rockinrecipesforautism.com, and you can see everything that we've been talking about. And uh, buy the book. I'll autograph the thing if you want, and I'll send it to you. And like I said, there's uh, 57 rockers in it. Uh, again, there's uh, probably, you know, nine, ten, a dozen Canadians in it as well. And uh, check it out. And these guys were all super, super cool. I didn't have any issues with any of them. And they were all glad to help. So support them as well. Hell yeah, man. Uh, like I said, I think that's a worthy cause. I think that's uh, a really cool investment. He will better check. There, there's Doug Aldridge of White Snake. See what he cooks. He, he actually had a, a guacamole. So it's all over the place. I love like everything from guacamole to Swedish pancakes, a couple of barbecues. Ron Kill, great guy. He did uh, some kind of fair winning chili that he had. Uh, Joey Allen from Warrant did a, a marinated sauce that was passed down for like three, four hundred years. Matter of fact, he, he reached out to me and, and bought a couple of dozen books just to give out to his family. So it's, it's nice to see that they're proud of it as well. 
that's amazing, dude. Like, I'm such a Mexican food fan. It's unreal. Right. Uh, and everything you just mentioned is right up my alley because I'm like, when it comes to Italian food, I love marinara. I love yeah. Mexican. I eat Mexican food probably about like three days a week. <laughs> I feel you, man. Yeah, I feel you. I like everything. Everybody loves tacos, right? <laughs> everything, man. Enchiladas and. Oh, yeah, man. It's good. Get you fat, though, if you ain't careful. Right. So the gym, <laughs> bless it, you know. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, don't be a stranger, man. Um, yeah, man. We'll stay in touch. Hell yeah. And uh, I'd love to have you back anytime. I know you got a show to do, so I don't want to take up more of your time and be that guy. But no, it's all good, brother. Um, yeah, dude. Like, I'd love to have you back anytime. It, it's so funny. I don't know what it is, but it seems like every guest I have or every show that I do a guest spot on, we just match, dude. And it's funny. Well, you seem like a cool dude, man. So that's that's part of it. If you were an asshole, I'd already been off here. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Um, yeah, man. It's all good. I just get along with everybody, uh, you know, and um, it, we end up super tight. So it's right. Cool. Well, cool. Um, so then I get repeat guests and, you know, everyone, even like Leland Squire want to come back. And I'm like, dude, anytime, honestly. Yeah. Like, well, dude, I'll, I'll bug you. Trust me. I'm always, I'm always got my fingers into something that I'm trying to work on every, every week. And then uh, I get something else to promote. I'll come bug you. You know what I mean? For sure. Hey man, I ain't shy. I'm I'm not shy. So <laughs> open door policy, dude. Anyway. Yeah, I'll be like, hey man, I'll, I'll probably ask you about your barbecue recipe. Actually, uh, yeah, hey man, I got a few. So you uh, know what I'm saying? I like the honey, the sweet honey barbecue one. Yeah, what was it? Jalapeno honey something. Yeah. So it's got a bit of a, a nip to it, but it's also sweet and on mm. on pork and on chicken. It just complements the flavor of the meat. Um, yeah. And then I also have a chipotle one that's really spicy. That's good for beef. So you get the best. Yeah, see what I'm saying? I'm all about it, man. I hate, I, I, I like to eat. <laughs> who doesn't, right? Right. Who doesn't? That's everybody's common thing. <laughs> love to eat and rock and roll and have sex. That's it. Man, that's, the, that's my the, own heart. That's all I that's want. The, that's the dream. I'm going to make a business card that just says that. So I throw a little bit of booze in there and let me have my gym time. And I am just a happy camper, man. There you go, man. <laughs> all good, man. I don't ask for much in life. Yeah, it's the simple things, right? Right? A good drink, a good screw, and a good, good, you know, meal. And a good meal, yeah. And a good gym. I think I go to the gym just to try to work all that out. But, yeah, that's <laughs> – I got gotcha. you. <laughs> well, thanks, brother, man. Thanks for having me on. And let me know, and uh, let's stay in touch. And uh, congratulations on you, too, for making that uh, chart or whatever you want to call it, the list. Hey, man. It's uh, an absolute honor. Yeah, man, you're right on my ass, so I have to try to step my game up. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you brother and it's been an honor man uh thanks for coming on dude that was actually really cool oh well, i appreciate it man and like i said uh peace and uh get you a copy of the book and we'll, and we'll talk soon so that was oh, my yeah. friend kenny Have a good one, what a fucking awesome <laughs> human being i mean is there anyone else more chill uh it, i compare it to getting along with you know meeting fucking Kenny Olson, the way we hit it off, or Kenny Aronoff, that way we hit it off. It's just one after another. I, uh, you know, I just get along with people. I don't know what it is. I always fucking thought that I was the equivalent to chewing tinfoil. Uh, you know, just unpleasant. <laughs> Maybe abrasive, not for everyone. But apparently people fucking feel otherwise. So that's pretty cool, man. And, you know... I, I just love talking to these people. They're such fucking legends, in my view. And this is a cat whose heart is obviously in the right place. Um, I mean, we're going to have some words because when I reached the top 10 out of the top 50, he was number 8. So uh, he did beat me by two fucking spots. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> I got to come for that spot. Um, no, it's all love, man. Art is not a competition. I'm honored to even be acknowledged and recognized. And he deserves that, that spot. He deserves higher, I think, too. But, uh, you know, I think we're all just grateful to be where we're at. And I think next year he'll fucking be even higher than number eight. And hopefully I will be fucking higher than ten. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I won't even be on the list. Who fucking knows? But he deserves it. Uh, he deserves all the best. And I appreciate y'all checking out the show. I would appreciate if y'all would fucking support his book because it's a great cause. 
and quite frankly he's a good dude and he deserves the support and it was a hell of an effort it was a great book like you look at the names on it it's got to be a great book he, he showed the pages if you've seen the video version of this show you've seen the pages where he's got pictures and everything of these mega fucking legends so it's actually really cool i'm buying it myself that's not bullshit i'm not blowing smoke you know you know me i don't do that shit uh, this is from the heart. I am buying that fucking book. I need it. I need to support my friend. I need to support that charity. And I need to have that fucking book. Because why wouldn't I? Like, come on, man. Uh, I love cooking. You know, I, I'm a fucking crazy ass, like, cooking freak. So, uh, during that show, I, I know my audio got a little wonky. Um... And I owe you fuckers a beer if you see me in the streets. I know I dropped the ball. My phone, that was not on him. That was all me. That was my phone that you could hear going off. And I realized I didn't mute the fucking thing. And I'm like, ah, I'm dumb. So you heard my phone go off during a show. It's so unprofessional. You know the rules. You see me in the street. You fucking say, I listened to that show. And I heard your phone. And I'll buy you a beer. I owe you. Uh, my apologies. So, thanks for checking out the show. I owe you a fucking drink when this stupid pandemic bullshit's over. Uh, I love you all for being so supportive, and thanks for listening, man. Um, keep checking out the show. There's plenty more to come. I'll catch your asses later, man.